we're going to face this comparison thing head on today. Because we know, you and I both know, I've done it too, that comparing ourselves to others is exhausting and it feels terrible and it doesn't inspire us or encourage us or make us feel confident and secure in who we are. It does the opposite of all of those things. So we are going to take a really good, honest look at why we compare ourselves to others. And then I'm going to give you some really simple but really powerful ways to break this habit, to break this thing that we do far too often that leaves us feeling bad about ourselves. But first, if you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second and introduce yourself in the comment section below. If you're back again, it is always good to have you. Either way, my name is Julia Christina, and I'm a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, a speaker, and an author, and the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, where we are taking this work to the next level, and you're being guided and supported the whole way through. I help heart-centered humans think better, feel better, and live better so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And this comparison thing, let's start off big, and this might feel hard, but I want you to first acknowledge where you find yourself comparing yourself to others the most often. Is it in your looks? It is, in, is it in your body? Is it in your abilities? Is it in your power or prestige or job status or likability or the decor in your home or whatever it is? Where do you find yourself comparing yourself the most to others? What are those things? And I am going to guarantee that it's the few repeat offenders that come up in your mind the most often. You don't compare yourself in everything. Maybe you don't compare your hair to someone else's hair. Maybe you don't compare your car to someone else's car. Maybe you don't compare your toothbrush to someone else's toothbrush. There are certain things that you are comparing yourself to others. And I want you to just think about it. and even put in the comment section below if you're feeling brave. What are the things that you find yourself comparing yourself the most to with others? And then I want to, you to ask yourself a question. Why am I comparing myself to this person or to these people in this way? And understanding that our comparisons, the specific things that we compare ourselves to others about, are things that we feel really insecure about. It's our own wounds. It's our own fears of our own shortcomings in these specific ways, not in all the ways. Because again, there's certain things you don't compare about, you don't even think to compare about, because it's not and insecurity for you. So taking a minute and offering yourself some compassion for that insecurity, for that part of yourself that feels vulnerable, for whatever reason. It came from somewhere. It started for some reason. But acknowledging that there's something deeper going on there and being gentle with yourself. And then I want you to take an honest look at what you're comparing yourself to someone else about. And I want you to reflect on how did they get there? What did they have to do? What did they have to sacrifice? What did they have to focus on? What did they have to put their effort towards? What is it that they had to do to get that thing that you are comparing yourself about or to have that or look like that or achieve that? And really taking an honest look and being like, okay, they put a lot into that. They still put a lot into having that or looking like that or achieving that. I might be comparing myself to their outcome, but am I willing to do the work? Is that what I actually want? And of course, there's no judgment here. I remember a few years ago when I first started doing this work, bringing my work more into the online space, there was another woman who was teaching similar concepts to me. And she was having a much different kind of success than I was having. And she had this big team and was building this big business. And she had this certification program. And she had this membership. And she had these courses. And she was like doing all of these things and really just building such a big business. And I remember thinking to myself at the time, oh my gosh, Look what she has. I want that. I should have that. And then I took a step back and I realized that I don't actually want that. 
I don't want to have a big team. I don't want to be having my hands in all these different pots. I don't want to do the work and put in the effort that it requires to have that in those ways. I don't want to put in that kind of effort. I don't want to be managing a big team of people. I want to be focusing on teaching and connecting with you. I don't want to be managing this big business and being stressed about making sure that I keep things going on this big level in order to pay employees. I don't want that pressure. I don't want my ten- attention divided in so many ways. And so I really realized that I might be comparing myself to her outcomes, but I actually don't want what, requi- what it's required to get that. So being honest with yourself about this, I might be comparing myself to somebody else's outcome, but is what they have to do to have that, is that actually in alignment with my values, with what's important to me, with who I am, what I want from my life and taking a good, honest look at that? And then I want to invite you to take this a step further. If you're ready, if you're not quite there yet, that's okay. But if you're ready to go deeper with this, I want to invite you to look at what they have done or what they have, where they've gotten to, or whatever it is you're comparing yourself to. And I want you to be happy for them. I want you to create a list of all the things that make them great. And then I want you to take another look and turn that gaze towards yourself. And I want you to be proud of yourself. And I want you to look at yourself. And I want you to acknowledge the things that are great about you. And I want you to make a list of all the things that are great about you. And seeing that there are things that are great about them, and there are things that are great about me. And a lot of those things might be different. And that is great. The next thing to get ourselves out of this comparison trap is to really be keeping your eyes on your own journey. Keep your eyes on what's important to you and focus on that. Instead of thinking things like, oh, they're so much better than me. They're so much more successful than me. They're so much more accomplished than me. They're so much more magnetic than me. They're so much more attractive than me. Whatever that is, Turning that focus back to, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm working on. This is how I'm growing. This is how I'm showing up intentionally. This is how I'm investing in the things that are important to me. And I am proud of that. And I am grateful to myself for focusing on that and to learning with and from that. Keep your eyes on your own journey, not compared to someone else, but in alignment with you. Your path is unique to you. And as soon as we start looking around at where other people are at and their paths, we get ourselves all jumbled up in our heads thinking that they're better than us for some reason. But you have no idea how far along someone is on their path, how long they've been working at something, investing in something, what other resources and supports that they've had along the way, any advantage of the advantages that they've had. You don't even know where their starting line was, let alone how long they've been working at moving forward from their beginning that may have been very different from your beginning. When we distract ourselves by invading someone else's journey with our comparison, we not only are taking away from their journey, but we are neglecting our own. We are taking away from our own by spending our energy focusing on theirs instead of spending our energy focusing on our own. How do I want to be showing up today in alignment with my values, with my goals, with what's important to me? How do I want to be living with intention for my own life? Focus on that and I will all but guarantee you don't have a whole lot of headspace left to distract yourself with anyone else. The next thing is if you are going to look at other people, look at them for inspiration, not for comparison. Look at them for seeing what is possible and being excited about that possibility. I learned that when I was comparing myself to this other person in this field, I 
stopped looking at them for what they were doing that I wasn't doing and how much further along they were than I wasn't. And I started looking at them for what's possible and then asking myself, of these possibilities, which ones do I want to be investing in? Which ones are actually important for me? And as I mentioned before, some of the things that she was doing it were really, when I took a good look at myself, they weren't things that I actually wanted. But when I did look at her for the things that she was doing that were more in alignment with what I wanted, I got excited because I'm like, look, she's doing it. It means it's possible. So look towards other people for inspiration, not for comparison. Now, look, I am not the first person that's going to mention this, and I probably won't be the last. But be mindful of your social media consumption. I'm not going to tell you how much time you're supposed to spend on social media and set a timer and do all these things. You need to do you and you need to figure that out for yourself. But really being mindful of how you feel after you come off social media or even how you feel while you're on social media. Are you watching things, looking at things, consuming things that make you feel inspired and excited and enthused and good about yourself? Or Are you looking at these curated, unrealistic snapshots of someone else's life that is only this little piece and a curated piece and then feeling bad about yourself because of that? Noticing how you are feeling. Entertainment and social media for all intents and purposes is mostly entertainment. Being entertained is supposed to feel good. We're supposed to come away feeling like we had a break, like we had a laugh, like we had an inspiration, like we learned something, like something good came out of it. And if good is not coming out of your time online, then I just want to invite you to audit that, to be mindful of that. What's making me feel not so good? What am I focusing on after being on social media? And am I proud of that? Do I feel good about that? Is that what I want to be focusing on. Just being more mindful. That's all. Also, in order to break this comparison thing, I want to invite you to look at who you are and what you have to offer. Similarly to that keeping your eyes on your own journey, focusing on the fact that no one can do you better than you can do you. That you might look at somebody else and think you need to be more like them, but you're not them. And you don't know what they've been through, where they're at, what's important to them. What you do know is where you're at, what you've been through, and what's important to you. Now, recently, I met someone online that I've been following for a while, that I was inspired by, that I admired in a lot of ways. And meeting that person and spending time with that person was really good. Because I realized that we are actually two completely different people. And we have different ideas about certain things. We have different perspectives on certain certain things. We have different priorities about certain things. And meeting her didn't take away from my admiration for her and the things that she inspires me about. But I never really did get caught in comparison, even though on the surface, her life looks amazing because she's an influencer online. But I've been doing this work long enough to know that absolutely no one rides for free. And it doesn't matter what something looks like on the outside, that all of us have stuff that we're dealing with. All of us have insecurities. All of us have struggles. And there's no kind of free ride in being human, that we get something or look like something or achieve something or have something and all of a sudden our lives are perfect and we ride for free. It doesn't work like that. But meeting her just really solidified that, that yeah, like I can look to you for inspiration, but we are different people. And I am so happy with the things that make me me. And I am so happy about the things that make you, you. We both, we all, all of us, you do, I do, have things that we bring to the table, have things that make us who we are. And those things are going to be different. Some of them will overlap, but they're going to be different. And that's what makes this world such a bright and beautiful and colorful and creative place because there's different iterations of humanness. And we all bring something to the tapestry. And now I want to invite you to think about the things that make you great, the things that you like about yourself, the things that you recognize and appreciate about who you are. 
you probably spend so much time thinking about what you're not, what you should be, how you compare to others, where you should be in your life, the things you should have solved or worked out by now that you haven't. And how about we just put that aside for just a minute and we start to really just recognize the things that you are, that you like about yourself, that you're proud of yourself for. And if you're feeling brave, put those in the comment section below. Claim those things for yourself. This isn't about lording yourself over anyone else. This isn't about saying, I'm better than you. This is about saying, I'm good with me. Make that list. And I also have a guide for you. It's six simple ways to be yourself without apology. And that's going to walk you through some really simple exercises that you can do to start focusing on you and who you are and how you are and celebrating that. And it's going to walk you through some steps to change your thoughts about that, to change your mind about that, to see things in yourself that you might be overlooking, ignoring, or downplaying. So make sure you grab that. Make sure you have supportive people in your life. Make sure you have at least some people in your life who you feel free to be yourself around, who you feel good about yourself around, who you feel like you can just exhale, relax your shoulders, and be yourself. And that that's fully accepted by them, which makes it, at least at the beginning, easier for you to accept you. I want you not just to accept yourself and stop comparing yourself to others. I want you to fall in love with yourself. I want you to be delighted in yourself. I want you to be tickled by yourself when you make a silly joke or when you do something kind of quirky or off the cuff. I want you to be proud of yourself for every step forward that you make. I want you to recognize yourself for the work that you're doing, for the progress you're making, for the intentions that you're setting and fulfilling, for the promises you're keeping to yourself, for the things you are ticking off your to-do list. I want you to sit and have a meal by yourself or sit in silence by yourself. And I want you to like the thoughts that are going through your head. I want you to learn how to be your own best friend, to enjoy your own company because you really like the person you are spending time with. I want you to be totally in love with yourself. You deserve that. We all deserve that. Will you do it? Will you work on it? It is always good to have you here. Grab that six simple ways to be yourself without apology. Let me know what connected with you in the comment section below. And as always, take good care of yourself. Take good care of those around you. Bye for now.